In Russia last year, 400 people were arrested for things that they said on social media. 400 people in Russia. Obviously, this country is very different. How many people do you think were arrested in Britain for things they said on social media last year? Go on. Take a guess. I have no idea. 3,300. Really? Arrested for what they'd said on social media? Yeah. Really? What sort of things get you well, arrested? Well, one example I give in my show is uh, there was a young woman from Liverpool uh, called Chelsea Russell, and people can look this up. Uh, her friend was killed in a car crash, a 19-year-old woman, and she posted the lyrics of his favorite song on her Instagram, the lyrics. And it was a rap song, so the lyrics contained several instances of the N-word. Okay? She was arrested, prosecuted, found guilty, given 500 hours of community service and a fine, tagged, and for a year she was under 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. curfew. My goodness. In Britain. In Britain. In 2018. So we talk about the Chinese system of social credits. Right. Uh, and uh, describe it as a, the creation of, or the emerging of a digital prison. Mm -hmm but we're doing it to ourselves voluntarily in the West, so to speak. Absolutely. I mean, so one... we'll cancel people socially if they say the wrong thing on social media. But you're telling me now that 3,500 people were visited by the police. No, far more were visited by the police. Uh, far more. Uh, there are cases uh, just half a year ago, and I defended Joe Brand, a British comedian, over this. She made some comments, which, you know, it wasn't a great joke, but she, she talked about this during this milkshaking episode where people were having milkshakes thrown at them. She said that, well, if I was doing it, I'd throw some acid over them, right? That's, that's not a great joke, but she got a visit from the police on the basis that she was, quote, inciting violence. And they eventually decided not to proceed with, with prosecution. But it was obviously a joke. She's a comedian. She was, on, she was on a comedy program. The context is very clear. Right? The, and uh, the, the, the defining case, actually, in recent British history on this was the Count Dankula incident. I don't know if you're familiar with this. No. This is a Scottish YouTuber who made... Um, okay, so his, this is quite, <laughs> quite an interesting one to explain. His girlfriend had a pug dog. You know those little yes. ugly dogs? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to no, get no, in trouble no, you'll now. Be in trouble. Yeah, yeah, you'll, You can expect a call. You've offended pug dogs. Exactly. Um, and she thought it was the cutest thing in the world. Yeah. And he wanted to annoy her for a prank. So he trained the dog to be the most horrific thing that he could think of, which in this case was a Nazi. So he trained this dog to do a Nazi salute. Right? He posted it on YouTube to his three subscribers at the time, and overnight the video went completely viral. Three million views in like a week. He was arrested, convicted, found guilty, fined 800 pounds, uh, and he is to this what day... What precisely was the charge? Uh, I th it was hate speech. Hate speech? Hate speech, yeah. Uh, oh, no, sorry. It was grossly offensive. He was being grossly offensive. That's, that's the correct legal terminology. Uh, and he, he, to this day, is a hate criminal. When the papers write about him, they're legally allowed to call him a Nazi hate criminal. Wow. That is where we are. And it really started with that. I talk about all of these things in my show, <clears throat> where we are now in a position where, in that court case, the prosecutor argued that context and intent are irrelevant. And the judge accepted this. Really? So even by retelling the story to you now, I am potentially engaging in grossly offensive behavior. Context and intent, according to these people, are irrelevant. Now, <laughs> get your mind around that and think about the potential implications of that. Well, it's extraordinary. But that is where we are. It's funny, like I said, I was, I was, I we were chatting before I think we started, I was having dinner with a friend from Saudi Arabia about this and I told her and she couldn't believe it you know so <laughs> what does that say about us do you know what I mean and she was like really in Britain but isn't, isn't this a free country that is where we are and that's why as I say we have to push back against it and go back to what are fundamental values of civilization John what are they freedom of speech freedom of association as you said right and respect for the individual and the rights of the individual that's not to say that community isn't important, but there's a level of rights that we all have.